Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens. I'm in the Petburi province of Thailand, and today we are making a rare Thai curry with the toddy palm fruit. But really quickly, first, how did we get here? In order to support local communities and highlight their unique food, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has recently announced Thailand's hidden dishes, which includes five rarely seen Thai dishes that come from five lesser visited provinces. And they asked me to travel across Thailand to eat all of them. I'm traveling to five lesser known provinces in Thailand to eat five hidden Thai dishes that are rarely ever seen outside of the region. I started in Chiang Mai. This is the biggest cucumber I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Tasted the incredible hidden dish of Khat Gan. Mm. That is the most well-rounded, medicinal, bitter broth you'll ever taste. And then flew back to Bangkok. Today, we're driving to Petburi to uncover our next hidden Thai dish. Yes, good morning, it's Mark Weens, and we flew back from Konkan. And now it's bright and early, actually not even bright yet, it's 5.30 a.m. We are driving to the next province, the next destination, to Petburi. And according to Google Maps, it says it's about an hour and 50 minutes, uh, about two hours to get there. Welcome to the town of Petburi. And actually Petburi, it's a full province of Thailand, considered in central Thailand, but on the western side. And even though it's a, I mean, it's a whole province, but there's also a main city of Petburi. And so we're actually gonna go to a village community, which is about 15 or 20 minutes outside of the town. So before we go to eat the hidden dish of Thailand in Petburi, we're gonna stop here for a quick breakfast. Yes, we have made it. This is the spot. Looks like a bit of a motorbike mechanic shop, but she's serving and she specializes. She's legendary for something called Kanomjin Todman. And Todman are the fried fish cakes, which are common throughout Thailand, especially in central Thailand. But it's fish, which has then been typically pounded into a paste, then mixed with curry spices and seasonings like chilies, can be finger root, can be garlic, lots of different herbs and spices that go into the curry paste that mix into a fish paste. Then they're deep fried. And the way that she, her method, she's making a fresh batch right now, but her method is that she puts holy basil leaf into each hand little finger fish cake. Then she deep fries them. And you can see that like them starting to get kind of spongy as she deep fries them. And it's common to make these Thai fish cakes with a number of different fish, but she said she's using a fish called Bla Kem Pale. So it's a seawater fish selling here for 20 years. And you can see as she puts them, just drops them in the oil, they start to puff up, start to balloon up. Um, and that's one of the signs of a great fish cake because it's aerated, it's fluffy. That smells incredible. You smell the aroma of the frying basil leaves, all the curry powder and that fish aroma. This is a perfect breakfast. And then that's all served over kanam jean, which are soft rice noodles and then also serves on some of the sauce, the dipping sauce, which is probably a little bit sweet and sour with chilies in it. Okay, Okay, I cannot wait. And they, man, as we've been standing here watching them, just people come by on motorbikes, get takeaway, but luckily they had some bowls that we could, could use to eat it here on the spot, but so fresh, quality. Oh, I cannot wait. 
Here we go. All the all the juice on the bottom. I just want to try that that fried fish cake. They literally like just came out of the oil. Mm. Oh man, that is incredible. The texture is so spongy, and then you've got that fragrance of that um, holy basil leaf just infused into it. It has this smooth sponginess. Did I say spongy again? Spongy is the first word that will come to mind. But then you taste the flavor of the curry paste as well, the red chilies in there. Oh man, that's just so good. And then just, I mean, just pure fish. You can just tell it's just pure fish, which has just been the fibers of the fish. Okay, let's get another bite with some of the noodles. Mm, no, I lost the fish cake. Mm. That sweet and sour sauce, the nam chim just kind of complements it. What you really notice is that when Todd Mine is made, the fish cake hit and pounded until all of the fibers of the fish are completely broken down. So once the, the fibers break down, it completely changes it te its texture and it becomes a lot more sticky and a lot more spongy. And when you have a good fish cake, that's something that you'll immediately notice. And that's exactly what she's doing here. Actually, I don't really remember a version that has so much basil in it. Uh, sometimes I'll find green beans or string beans or the yard long beans in it, but this one is so much basil and that's just powering it. Mm. It's so good. Perfect on the go breakfast, street food in February. Okay, from here, I think it's just gonna be about a 15 minute drive or so to get to the community for the main dish. So just outside of Peburi town, and we're now getting into the community off the main road. But it's really beautiful back here. All of the Palmyra toddy palm trees, rice paddy fields, cows and buffaloes, and small mountains in the distance. I really love the countryside. We have arrived, and let me just introduce you to Puyai. Just want to welcome you to Muban Raikang. This is the neighborhood and it's also a community. And so we're meeting up our host today, Puyai Prasong, and he is the head of the community here. This entire community specializes in the Palmyra palm or the Tati palm, which we'll learn so much more about as we continue this day. Uh, but it's so great to be here. The air is fresh. It's a beautiful morning. This is fantastic. The breeze, the air coming off of the paddy fields, the buffaloes. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. We're entering, I mean, You'll see the toddy palm trees within kind of like the dividers of the rice paddy fields. But then this is more of like a little plantation here. So beautiful, so peaceful. And I think this is where we're gonna be able to harvest it. And so again, it's called the toddy palm tree. It's called the palmyra palm tree. Sometimes it's called the sugar palm tree because of its importance in sugar, palm sugar. And what I was mentioning before is that this is something that you've probably had before in many, many Thai dishes. It's an ingredient that's used from this tree when you see in a recipe palm sugar. This is the palm that the sugar comes from. So he just harvested, it's, it's like the flowers or the the... So this is the liquid, this is the juice that comes out of those, those uh, flowers that are chopped and then they put bamboo. Okay, cup. Oh, there it is. Okay, cup. Oh. Wow. Man, it's just the greatest sweetness you'll, your mouth will ever experience. Such a beautiful, like, well-rounded harmony, sweetness, the naturalness. Oh man, that's good. After the sap is collected in bamboo bottles from the top blossoms, it's then simmered down in giant woks over a fire until the water starts to evaporate, leaving behind the condensed, crystallized palm sugar. Something that's really interesting is that the word for any sort of sugar in Thailand is nam tan, which literally means water of the toddy palm a tribute to the importance of sugar from this tree. But that is not the ingredient 
that we are focusing on today. What we are looking for are the fruits. Just to understand the importance of this tree, the sugar comes from it, uh, but also the husk of the fruit is used in a different Thai snack that we'll actually be learning about later this afternoon. There's also jellies, kind of similar to a coconut. I mean, this is a palm tree, so it does have palm fruit, which is kind of similar to a coconut, but also quite different. And so there's jellies on the inside that you can eat. These are things that are common that you'll see across Thailand. I think you just chopped one right now. All right, here it is, harvested fresh. And it's gonna be something really fascinating how they prepare it into a curry. But typically, he said that they put it on their shoulder and carry it, but man, this could be a workout. So you can kind of remove those outer casings first. That next process, he just shaves that really hard outer skin and then revealing the softer flush or fibrous flush, uh, young flush of the fruit. So she's gonna take that out first. So that little section is bitter. Oh. oh, okay. It's like husk, young husk that you're eating and she just kind of chops it and then shaves it into water with salt. And she said when you add salt to the water like that and then let it sit in the water, then it won't turn uh, dark, it won't blacken uh, or oxidize. So that's gonna go into there. And then already you can see once she slices down a little bit, you can start to see those jelly sockets which are still very young and very, I think there's not much jelly in them yet because they're so young. Oh, okay. So it looks like gang. So she'll put the, those jelly sockets into the curry as well. Uh, in a riper fruit, the jelly sockets can sometimes be like, almost like golf ball sized. Whereas now they're just very, very small because they're so young. But that's what, we're gonna be able to eat that in a curry. Uh, it's totally, totally edible. And once it's cooked, it will be soft. I mean, this is just one of those incredible ingredients that, I mean, the tree has so many uses. And yet, when you're outside of the region that it grows, just those main ingredients like the palm sugar are what's famous, are what's used in dishes. But when you're in the region where they grow it, right here in Petburi, it's like the communities, the locals in this region have just found a use for every part of the tree, of the fruit, and the resourcefulness, just like, 100% usage of the tree, nothing goes to waste. So we're gonna get started on the krinkang, which is the curry paste for this dish, for this curry. And so these are some of the fresh ingredients that are gonna go into it. I mean, everything is from right here. The finger root, which is also known as lesser ginger, that's gonna go in first, but there's also some makrut limes, there's some shallots, there's some garlic, some dry chilies, and also some palm sugar, which is from the, the palm as well. Oh man, I love Rachai. 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 It's so fragrant. The finger root. Kind of similar to ginger, but also has a sweetness to it. Okay. Okay, so that curry paste is already pounded with the dry chilies, with shallots, garlic, mm. and uh, makrut lime. So that's already been pounded. That goes into the, the finger root. Okay, come. So this is mackerel. Mackerel, bent head mackerel, short head mackerel, very common in Thai food, in Thai cuisine, especially in the central region of Thailand. So, oh, okay, so she's just taking, the mackerel has already been grilled. Oh, and that's gonna go into the, the curry paste to be pounded. She mentioned that typically it needs to be uh, grilled meat. It can be either pork or fish that usually goes into the recipe. This is gonna make the base gravy of the curry. Mackerel, deboned. Also, she takes off the skin, takes out the bones and that goes directly into the curry paste. So then she also has a piece of, this is king mackerel or kingfish that I think has been salted, preserved, salted. 
that's gonna add some extra flavor as well. And she mentioned that it's good to add a lot of fish because that will make it richer. And that's gonna also, I mean, that's one of the techniques that's used in central Thailand to thicken the gravy or thicken the curry sauce, mashing fish. And then you've got that really thick texture along with the coconut milk and the curry paste and all the, the seasonings and all those fresh herbs and ingredients. She then boils coconut milk, and then once that heats up a little bit, then she adds in the entire blob, the entire amount of curry paste that she pounded up with all that fish inside as well. So there's already so many flavors that have come out of those dry chilies, out of the magrut lime, out of the grachai, the finger root, but then also out of the smoked or grilled fish and the salted fish. So you can see how many flavors, the complexity already that's gonna be uh, just infused together in this curry as she cooks that, I mean, just the aromas are coming out. It just smells incredible already. And yeah, one of the things that she's emphasizing in this recipe, in this dish, is that you absolutely cannot compromise on grilled meat. It has to be grilled meat or grilled fish that has to go into the recipe. That increases the complexity, the smokiness. So that's essential. And I mean, this step is also very crucial because she doesn't want the coconut milk to, to break and to simmer to boil too hard, which will, which will spoil the, well, the coconut milk will break and will start to oil instead. So she's keeping a real eye on it. Okay, and now it's time. Okay, so that's the, the tops of the Palmyra palm fruits, the toddy palm fruits, which has been just soaking for the last 10 minutes in salt water. And she wants to squeeze that out. Then it goes in. And some more coconut milk goes in. Any cool, I got tea, Michael. Oh, this is like the coconut cream, the thicker coconut milk. I almost forgot about the, the fruits, the jellies. Not only the jelly, but it's also like the entire socket. Oh yes, that's going in. But again, tea, tea, no konsi tamarat. So this is a piece of grilled, grilled pork. So she's just gonna balance the flavor of the curry, salt. And then this is the palm sugar from the same palm tree. Oh yeah, you can tell that's pure, pure palm sugar, the real deal. You gotta taste that, that little bit of that palm sugar. Oh. It is so unbelievably good. You can tell that's just 100% because it almost looks like peanut butter. And it just is almost like, I mean, totally liquefies on your tongue. It's sweet, but it has, it's not like sharp sweet, like processed table sugar. It has so much complexity. It has this caramely flavor to it from it being cooked down. That is just sugar on another level. And you know, they're not gonna make a mistake with palm sugar around here. I mean, this is one of the pet is one of the, the, the main sources of palm sugar. So she adds in all that sugar goes in. That's gonna make it so good. And again, that sugar is not just for sweetness, but it has this well, incredible, well-rounded aroma to it. Even a hint of a saltiness. And then here goes in all of the, the thinly sliced grilled pork. So this is the difference here. This one is the makrut, which she has a tree right here, makrut lime. And then this one is somsa, okay? Oh, it smells incredible. Mmm, the somsa is more delicate, yeah. more delicate, I um, mean, like, on, 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 oh, okay, okay. So, sai sai makrut kap somsa, or somsa yang dia, okay, okay, okay. Okay. okay, okay, so now she's getting ready to add the somsa. She's gonna just couple them together or, or pair them together and then slice them really finely, shave them really finely, then it's gonna go directly into the curry. Oh, as soon as she adds that in, it just smells so fragrant. Gives the whole curry a citrusy aroma. 
So he just tosses those on, sprinkles those on, turns off the fire, and it's ready. And now the aromas have really started coming out. You can really smell the hom gra chai kam. Mark chai 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 kam. You really smell that finger root. Okay, and it's ready. It's ready. I cannot wait to try it. Oh man, and you see the fruits in there, the coconut milk, it's so fragrant. Putting this onto my rice. Okay, here we go. So we made it. Another one of Thailand's five hidden dishes of Peburi. And this, what a dish. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's incredible. Oh man, the tenderness. Those palmyra palm tops of the husks, because they're young, it almost feels kind of like bamboo shoots in your mouth. Kind of has that woody, woody texture to it. But then at the same time, it has this sweetness. It has this absorption. Because I mean, they're very fibrous and very woody. It kind of just absorbs all of that flavor and absorbs all of that curry paste and all of the coconut milk. And so as you bite down, and because they're shaved so thin, sliced so thin, it just totally like soaks up all of that flavor. Mm. And what really stands out is you taste the, those somsa leaves, that citrus leaf, but then also the, the grachai, the finger root. You just immediately, that flavor just surrounds your mouth and your taste buds. And then you've got the little jellies in there making it like sweet and fruity, that, what a dish. Okay, I think this one is a, this is one of the jelly sockets, which I kinda wanna search out for this next bite. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's kinda straight up like a sweet and sour curry. And that jelly socket, because it's not overly developed yet, it just has a little bit of a jelly to it. And then the, the whole socket area of that jelly is kind of that woody, the same texture. Oh man, I, I think I totally forgot there was even pork in here. There's a slice of pork, but almost, it almost is like a meat substitute. Oh, I'm gonna drench it. Drench it. Mm. I mean, straight up, it could be a meat substitute. I can barely tell the texture difference in my mouth between that grilled pork and the slices of the palm fruit. They're like meaty. That's what it is, it's actually meaty. I mean, it could straight up be a substitute. Um, and then also you do taste that complexity, the smokiness from the grilled fish, the mackerel, the saltiness from that salted king mackerel, and also the, the grilled pork in there as well. And they did also prepare a few extra dishes for us to complete our meal. So we have a kaijio, a Thai omelet, which I think this would actually go incredibly well with the curry. Add some more curry to the top of it. Then you can go in with your spoon, with the curry, with the omelet, with some of the palm fruit. Mm. And there's no doubt a Thai omelet and curry is one of the great combinations. And that particular combination, the omelet, is just salty and crispy and fried. And then you have the the sweet fruitiness of the curry. So that all combined with rice, delicious. Okay, so we also have some nampikapi. This is a shrimp paste chili dip. And again, it should include chilies. It should also include palm sugar in here as well. Oh, and chilies, yes. Oh, these little guys. Mm -hmm. The fermented shrimp paste. Oh, those little chilies are so good. They're just popping in your mouth. Um, and then you have, again, that sweetness but the balanced sweetness from the palm sugar. Another dish they have is called gengju no mai so, which is a boiled soup with fresh bamboo shoots. And they said, because now it's the rainy season, bamboo shoots are plentiful. Mm hmm mm hmm Oh, I mark. Oh, Ying, that's so good. Oh, I love bamboo shoots as well. And then there's so much garlic in there. I think that's what makes a difference. They definitely fried off some garlic added that to the, the soup to just really bring out the garlicky flavor of it. And those bamboo shoots are so tender. Again, meaty. Mm. 
the the palm fruit is kind of like like a young jackfruit as well. Kind of has that fibrous, meaty texture to it. And I think as with, I mean, most of these five hidden dishes of Thailand that we're covering in this series, it's about that ingredient. It's about harvesting that ingredient, which is local from this region, to be able to create this dish. And that's, I mean, really what makes it so special, so rare, and so unique. What a curry. That was just so good and so unique. And this community, uh, I mean, I love what they're doing in terms of education, in terms of cultural preservation, and then also being able to share their culture, their food, the local ingredients of this area. So you can come here, you can visit, you can see the process of the palm sugar being made, you can see the Palmyra palm trees, and also you can come to eat at their community restaurant or even when they do workshop. But I wanna say a huge thank you to Puyai Prasong, who is in charge of this community for arranging this entire experience that was absolutely fascinating and delicious. From here, we are continuing actually to another community, which is just down the road, uh, that specializes in the next food that's gonna be made from the Palmyra palm fruit. Just down the road from where we were, we're at a place which is called Kanom Tan Me Ying, and it's an auntie who specializes in something in Thai which is called Kanom Tan. Now, Tan or Don Tan is the Palmyra toddy palm tree. And this is a dessert. It's like a fluffy, bready cake made from also the husk, except the young fruits, but the very old, ripe fruits. And even though I'm not huge on sweets, this dessert happens to be one of my favorite sweets desserts in all of Thailand. And so here we go, here's the extremely old fruit. And she said when the, the skin kind of starts to wrinkle and starts to crack, that's when the like sugars of the fruit are starting to come out. So it's ready, it's bursting. It has a very strong aroma. Kind of almost has a little bit of a fermenty aroma, a little bit of a sourness coming out of it. Oh, I like it. And I mean, I've tasted it before. It does almost kind of taste and look like pumpkin. Wow, that, you can see how orange and how stringy, how fibrous it is. And that aroma, when she opens it up, it just, it's so pungent, sweet, kind of like slightly fermented, an aroma that comes out of it. And yeah, it kind of like carroty or pumpkin-y almost. Really extremely fragrant. Oh, it's so fibrous. That center section is, she said, is bitter. So I need, I need my, my side. Okay. Oh, okay. Call, call, chim, need, no, don't come. So you can see, I gotta taste a little bit of it. And actually, last time I did, I actually made a video and I did come to try the fresh fruits like this. Wow. 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 They are amazing. She said, <laughs> she said that if you eat this, you'll go to the bathroom really well. <laughs> that is amazing. Open up the right Palmyra fruit. And these are not the seeds on the inside, which is the only thing I've eaten. This is the like fibrous husk. Or what is, I don't even know. This is such an amazing learning experience. It smells like like overripe pumpkin, pumpkin that's half decomposed. And you can just, they said it's sweet. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> okay, I might have diarrhea if I eat too much of this, I think. <laughs> That's about enough. No, it's, okay, extremely fibrous. It's just like straight up strings. Uh, and then you kind of like suck off the meat from those strands, those strings. And it's like sticky, like it's like condensed pumpkin. Wow. Oh my god. One. That. Ling Chao. Ah, that's why there's so many monkeys around here. The monkeys love it, yeah. Wow. That would definitely just run through you if you were to eat the fibers. It's so sweet. And has a little bit of a saltiness and a really stickiness. Mmm. It's like pumpkin and carrots all mixed together. Oh, cup and cup? It's so sticky. One of the coolest fruits ever. And again, I mean, this is straight up like a, 
looks like the sugar coming out, like sticky honey sugar coming out of the husk. Mmm. And that, right there, that pulp, that orange flesh, the meat of it, that is the main ingredient for the karamtan, for the, the toddy palm cakes. <laughs> So all that flesh goes into water. Okay, so it's just water. And then she just kind of massages all of that pulpiness out of it. She really has to just scrub and scrape that until all of that pulp, all of the sugars are removed from the, the stringy, fibrous, the husk. So the next step is, I mean, it's almost like a, a very slow coffee drip. She says it needs to hang and drain overnight. And so that's gonna separate the water because you're actually trying to now concentrate that liquid because you needed the water to then scrub out all of that flesh and the sugars. But now you want to concentrate that. And so she's, she hangs it in this bag and with this, the fineness of that mesh, it's gonna strain out the water, leaving the concentrated pulp. And that's the ingredient that you want. Luckily, we won't need to wait until tomorrow because she has a batch ready. <laughs> Bang, kao chao. Kao chao. So it's rice flour. Okay, and this is the, the pulp that's been dried once it's dried overnight. A little bit of salt goes in. Oh, that's some really buttery, thick coconut milk goes in. So in order to make the batter, she starts with rice flour, puts that in, then adds that pulp. And by the time that pulp has all the water has come out of it, it turns to like a I mean, it's almost the yellowness of egg yolks or duck yolks. And then it's also like kind of dried up. So it's almost like pumpkin flesh. And then she puts that in, then she adds in a little bit of salt. And she, typically you're supposed to mash that and knead that for 30 minutes to an hour to get the texture right. Okay, so she's had to add just a little bit of table white sugar. And then also the pure palm sugar. Pure palm sugar goes in. There's no water in it. There's no liquid other than coconut milk that's making it so rich and sticky and the oil's coming out. And so that's mainly the batter recipe. Those are all the ingredients. But from here, again, it's a time-consuming process. You have to wait, and they said it depends on the weather. If it's hot, it will go faster. If it's cooler, it will take longer because it needs to kind of ferment and rise. I think the combination of ingredients, she said, and the way you massage it, as well as the palm fruit, has its natural rising properties uh, once it starts to ferment. And so, again, well, luckily, they have a batch already for us to go. Just incredible how bubbly, how fluffy, how spongy it is, all coming naturally, rising naturally from the toddy palm fruit. Again, she just makes sure that texture is perfect for that batter. And now that's going into a pouring kettle. Oh man, she lifts up the steaming water. And there's pandan in there too. So that's really aromatic. She said very strictly, there's no lifting that lid for 20 minutes. If you lift the lid, I think it will mess, mess the entire cakes up. Uh, but she lifted up that lid uh, and you can already smell that the water has been infused with pandan leaves, kind of give it an extra fragrance. I'm getting excited. We have a 20 minute wait and this is 
I mean, I think it really is one of my favorite Thai desserts. I really enjoy it. I really like it. And just being able to see the entire process, all the fresh ingredients from right here makes it all the much better. Wow, the wait is over. Exactly 20 minutes on the dot. They know what they're talking about. Perfect. And you can see how they've fluffed up. I think what they're looking for is that kind of like, it breaks on the top on the surface. I'm so excited. They're so fluffy, so spongy. It's unbelievably soft. Oh, it's perfect. Oh man. Okay, I, you could pop this in in one mouth, but I just want to break it open so you can see the texture, the inside of that. Oh, unbelievably aerated. That is delicious. Mmm. Aerated. That's what it is. It's aerated. It's fluffy. It's like a cotton ball on your tongue, but with the aroma of the Palmyra palm fruit, that ripe pumpkin-y flavor. Oh, it's so good. It's really incredible. I love the texture and the aroma from the fibers of that fruit, the oiliness. Mm. Delicious. Auntie wanted to show us one more thing, and this is something extremely fascinating. And she tried to explain the whole process. In order to replant and reproduce the toddy palm tree, then you take the seed, you soak it in water, and it starts to sprout and turns to this after a month soaking it in water. Then you crack open the seed, and then what you have is like the, the apple on the inside, which is very similar to a mutant coconut, like this fibrous flesh. So again, kind of spongy, but that is a rare, it's a rare delicacy and something that you'll pretty much only find in this region where they grow so many toddy palm trees. And she cracked it open for us. It's an honor to have a chance to taste it. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Oh, the sweetness that comes out of it. Mmm. It tastes like the palm sugar is just gushing out of this really remind me of a mutant coconut. When you crack open a coconut and they're like, they're pretty rare, but you will find them. Um, and you crack open and you have that coconut, the apple on the inside, that mutant. That's kind of what it is, except this is even sweeter and just gushing full of palm sap nectar. Mm. That was an absolutely incredible experience. And again, it's called Kanam Tan Meying and we got some kanam tan to take home with us. Highly recommended. They were just so incredibly nice and such a fascinating process of one of my favorite desserts in Thailand. Okay, we're driving back into Petburi town because there's always one dish, one restaurant, a place that I have to eat at every time I go through Petburi. So we're on our way there now. Yes. Okay. So this restaurant is on the side of the highway, but it's a classic, uh, just an old school restaurant in Petburi called Sisawat. One of their specialties is their catfish, but then they also have this huge plate of kaklukapi, which is one of my favorite dishes. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna order a few of their recipes. Um, and I think we got here just in time. This place is very popular, especially at lunch when it's packed, but I'm excited. Okay. I think we still have one more dish that's on its way, but I can't wait to start eating. And one of their signature dishes, a dish that you absolutely have to get when you come here is called Kao Kluk Kapi. And what that means is it's Kluk is a word in Thai that is a, it's a mixture. And this is a very common Thai dish. The rice is fried in shrimp paste, so it's really fragrant. And then on the top, they have omelet. There's a sweet pork. Usually there's Chinese sausage. They have some cabbage and they have a whole handful of shredded curly green onions as well as cucumbers. And so you have to, and I think there's chilies on the bottom there. So you have to kluk, you have to mix it all up to get all those ingredients mixed together. And so it's like kind of a fried rice salad, just full of flavor. And the idea is to get a little bit of everything onto, or a lot of everything onto one bite. Mmm. Mmm. It's so fragrant. The saltiness of the shrimp paste and the sweetness, I think from palm sugar, cooked with the pork, the crunch, the freshness of the green onions and the cabbage and the cucumber and the omelet. Oh, that's amazing. Another dish we got is called baduk tad pad pet. So this is deep fried catfish with curry paste and then a bunch of fried crispy holy basil leaves on top. And you can see this catfish has been deboned and then 
maybe mashed up or uh, chopped up, minced, and then deep fried so that it's kind of fluffy. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I love those crispy basil leaves. Again, just like we had for breakfast this morning. It's sweet, but at the same time, you've got the crispy crunch of all that catfish, which has been minced up. You've got the flavor of the chilies, and then that sweetness. It's almost like candied catfish curry with basil all in one dish. The next dish is called geng liang, and this is uh, one of their signature dishes as well. It's more of a vegetable stew. All sorts of, a huge assortment of vegetables in there. There's pumpkin, there's mushrooms, there's, I believe, loofah gourd in there, baby corn. And you can see that I believe the broth is also made with shrimp paste. Oh, and you also really smell. Definitely uh, another signature ingredient that you need for this is lemon basil. Ooh. Boiling hot. Oh man, that is so refreshing, so vegetal. And, you, and then you've got that salty umami coming from that shrimp paste and then that freshness of the lemon basil. I love how all the vegetables are not overcooked. They still remain a little bit crispy. And then the mushroom, has, the mushroom has just absorbed all of that broth. Oh, it's really good. Really good. Mm hmm As I dig down, I think it's smoked or dried fish in there. Also adding some of the flavor. And then the final dish we got here is uh, bakapong pad cha. So this is barramundi in a pad cha dish. And pad cha includes finger root as well as basil and curry paste. Be careful of the bones. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. That's my favorite dish. This is actually the dish that, one of my favorite dishes in all of Pet Booty. Usually when I come to Pet Booty, this is the dish that I can't miss. However, unfortunately today, he said because it's been raining a lot, they can't get the seawater catfish. So usually this dish is made with seawater catfish. So baruk kale pad cha. Um, and normally they have it, but today because, yeah, because he said it's been raining so much, the fishermen have not been able to get the seawater catfish. That's why they're making it with the barramundi. But it's that same flavor. I mean, to be honest with you, any fish will do, because it's that blend of the curry paste, the finger root, the grachai, which we've had a lot of today, as well as the herbs that just make it so good. Mm. What a dish. That's amazing too. Oh, what a meal. That was so good. And what an incredible day as well. I learned a lot. And toddy palm fruit curry, it's just such a unique, such a rare dish. And that's why it is one of the five mm. hidden dishes of Thailand. From here, we're driving straight back to Bangkok. And then the next day tomorrow, we drive on to Trat, which is in the far eastern side of Thailand, where we will find our next hidden dish of Thailand. Also, a huge thank you to the Tourism Authority of Thailand for inviting me to collaborate with them on this ultimate food adventure. Oh. Oh, wow. So stay tuned, keep on watching this entire series. You're not gonna wanna miss the food adventure in Ka Chang.